The Tour of France gets underway today, so three weeks of exciting and dramatic racing for us all to look forward to. But just as exciting if you're a geek like me, it's all the new tech on display. The Tour de France is after all the biggest showcase in the world for the many bike brands involved in the professional peloton. And over the last few days, well, we've had loads of new bikes being launched and leaked in the pro peloton. There's a Canyon Ultimate and the Giant Propel, not launched yet, but you can see my videos on those linked down below. Also, the new Trek Medallion was officially unveiled yesterday and my video first look on that is linked down below as well. But today in this video, I'm gonna run out some other new tech developments that have broken cover in the last few days, including the world's most expensive marginal gain you're ever likely to see, faster and cooler helmets from Specialized, new bikes from Scott and Candel, and get this, a radical glimpse into the future or an alternative future if the UCI rules were scrapped from Cadex. So without further ado, let's dive in. And we'll start with a bike designed to be as fast as possible, the brand new third generation Scott Foil RC. This is the company's all out aerodynamic race bike, first launched in 2011, one of the first of a breed of aerodynamic race bikes, bringing all the air road development from a time trial bike to a road bike for the first time. And this is a third generation bike, the fastest one they've ever made according to the company's claims. And to make the bike, they once again partnered with Simon Smart, a British aero expert, to develop the bike over the last two years to make it faster and also lighter. And they're claiming, their claims, not mine, that a new bike will save you 16 watts at 40 kilometers per hour. And they've also saved weight, so the frame weighs a claimed 915 grams, which would definitely be handy on the mountains. And that's quite a bit lighter than the previous foil by as much as 9%. But it's those aero savings that are most exciting, especially if you're a speed focused rider. And those aero savings are with the wheels and a rider on the bike, the same as with the Trek Medone we talked about yesterday. It seems the days of developing a frame and a fork in isolation without the rider in consideration are well behind us. Because the rider makes up 80% of the drag and the interaction of the rider, the legs and the arms with the wheels and the frame are really important to giving you that overall aero benefit. The testing for a new bike was done in the Mercedes F1 wind tunnel, which hasn't worked out so well for Mercedes this year, but I'm sure they won't have the same problems. And Simon Smart says the testing was focused on delivering a design that worked in real world wind conditions most of us have to deal with. So air speeds from 32 up to 48. So when they say real world, they mean pro real world conditions. But I think all of us can manage at least 32 on a good day. We're starting to see some trends emerging on the latest aero race bikes. We saw it with the Trek Medone yesterday and we see it with the new Scott Foil. And that's due to the relaxation of the UCI's rules around aerodynamic properties of a frame design. So like that Medone we saw yesterday, there's now a larger bottom bracket section. So you have a kind of flat shelf to the top of the bottom bracket where that junction with the seat tube and the down tube meet. And there's also a fin at the top of the down tube to smooth the airflow around the top of the fork crown into the down tube. And those are trends we're starting to see on quite a few aero road bikes. It's no surprise that aero bikes eventually all start to look the same because they have the UCI limitation of rules and the physical properties of airflow. And those two things combined will create bikes that do look generally the same. As with all aero bikes these days, they're full internal cable routing and it's disc brake only. Tire clearance is limited to 30, so more generous than the Trek Medone yesterday. But Scott actually specs a 25 on the front and a 28 on the back, so the best balance for aero and comfort. And something we've seen in the past from Conti, who once sold an attack force tire combo that are narrow on the front and wide on the back for the same reason. Geometry has been taken from the attic, so it should be the same if you're going from one bike to the other. And no prices have been revealed on a new bike, but expect it to be fairly expensive as most top end aero race bikes are these days. I'm sure you all know that marginal gains is a big deal in pro cycling and has been for the last 10 to 15 years or so. Team Sky and Dave Brailsford made it really popular in cycling generally. And Josh Portner, now of Silka fame, but formerly of Zip, and you might have seen my podcast video with him linked down below in case you missed that, is a big proponent of marginal gains. But the cost of marginal gains are getting ever more expensive. Those last few watts are getting harder and more expensive to extract from a top end rider and bike. 
and this new development might be the most expensive saving yet. So this is a brand new Ceramic Speed OSPW Aero, a 739 euro, I'll let that sink in for a moment, derailleur cage, which you claim to save 2.5 seconds over 25 kilometers. It was, like the Scott Foyle we spoke about earlier, developed by Simon Smart, the British aero expert. He's definitely been a busy lad the last few years. And they've made a carbon reinforced cage wrapped around their oversized pulley wheels. And apparently, according to their claims, it can save between 40 and 60% drag compared to a conventional setup. But here's the thing, before you get outraged and rush to the comment section down below, it's not really a product aimed at me or you, it's aimed at the pros, trying to give their pros every small advantage in the toughest, fastest race on the planet. That high cost is due to the fact they have a big development cost over the last two years. Simon Smart Time definitely probably isn't cheap, and it's not a product they're mass manufacture either, and they're not using cheap materials to make it either. And the reason it's on sale is purely to keep the UCI happy. They have a rule that whatever equipment is used by pros, you and I have to be able to buy it. That's a unique thing about cycling, and a great thing about cycling is that you can buy whatever the pros are using. You can't do that with F1, you can't buy an F1 car and have it in your driveway tomorrow morning. But as pro racing got ever faster and the marginal gains got ever smaller, the cost of finding those small improvements is getting higher and higher. So it's definitely not a product aimed for you and I for mass consumption, it's one for the pros. But if you are with deep pockets and you fancy having the best of the best, that it costs you 739 euros. But the big downside to the marginal gain is that the drivetrain efficiency is about 1% of the whole system efficiency. So you've got drivetrain, you've got rolling resistance from the tires, but the biggest resistance is the air, the wind you have to push yourself through as a rider, and the rider makes up about 80%, and then the wheels and the frame are bits and bobs. So saving up to 60% on something that contributes to 1% of the overall system drag is pretty damn small. But on the flip side, it looks freaking cool, and I'd definitely love to have one on my bike if I had more money than cents, but I don't have more money than cents, so I'll leave it on the shelf for now. But if you want that pro look, if you want that pro performance, then that is what you definitely need. So I'm sure you saw all the jazzy jerseys from Rafa for EF Education Easy Posts on social media the other day, it caused quite a storm. But hiding in plain sight was also a new bike that hasn't yet been launched from Cannondale. Now, the Tour de France starts with a time trial, probably on right now as you're watching the video, and they had developed a new Super Slice time trial bike. It's actually been around for about a year now in development, it hasn't actually launched, but given we spotted it about a year ago, it must be pretty close to launching, so hopefully by the time you watch this video, or over the course of the Tour de France for the next three weeks, it will actually launch. So it's a new time trial bike with disc brakes, no rim brakes in sight, and it definitely looks like their System 6 Aero race bike but with time trial extensions on. Can't wait to get more details on that bike, definitely looks fast, I love the paint job on that one as well, but no more details as yet, but watch your space for that one. Now, when it comes to helmets, Specialized is a very popular brand, both in a professional peloton because it sponsors loads of teams, but also out in the real world with lots of riders opting to choose their helmets, especially the top level S-Works helmets. And it has three new helmets. Brand new third generation Evade, the Aero helmet, third generation Profile, their lightest ever helmet, and also a new time trial helmet as well. And the helmets all aimed at being faster and cooler, so better ventilation across the board. Firstly, the new Evade 3 is claimed to offer better ventilation than the old model, which I thought was actually pretty good and better than most aero helmets, which can suffer in hot weather or if you're a big sweater. Specialized is putting a figure of 10% on the improvement over the old helmet without compromising the aero performance, and most of the improvements, as you might guess, come from bigger vents, a bigger hole or diffuser, as they're calling it, at the rear, and improved MIPS. Where the Evade is all about aero, the Prevail has long been one of the lightest and best vented helmets in the company's range, and definitely in the wider helmet market. This new third generation offers a massive 24.5% improvement of ventilation over the old helmet, which is absolutely huge. They achieved this improvement by removing the foam bridges across the helmet, creating bigger channels for air to flow through. Weight is still low, claimed to be 260 grams for a size medium. The Evade, by the way, is only 10 grams heavier. Now, to ensure safety on the new Prevail is good, with bigger channels and less EPS foam, inside they developed a cage of woven aramid cables, which is said and claimed to offer better distribution of forces across the helmet during an impact. 
and both helmets score really well in independent testing from the Virginia Tech Lab with five star ratings for each helmet. I'll put a link to that Virginia Tech Lab down below. Now, strictly speaking, this isn't Tour de France Tech, but it would be if there were alternative rules for the Tour de France, or if the UCI hadn't been so strict on its rules going back many years. This is the sort of bike we might be seeing in the Tour de France if things had turned out a bit differently. So this is a brand new Cadex Superbike, or a triathlon bike. Now Cadex is a brand owned by Giant. They used it back in the 90s and they resurrected it a few years ago for their wheel range, but now for their triathlon bike. And it definitely reminds me of the 90s, that period when we had monocoque bikes like the Lotus 108 that Chris Boardman used so effectively and so devastatingly at the Barcelona Olympics. So like the old Lotus 108 track bike, we have a single mainframe structure that swoops down low, no top tube, and then like the brand new Hope track bike, we have a super wide fork design. And this apparently not only improves aero, but also stiffness to benefit the handling. That lack of a top tube not only improves aero performance, but also provides access to the storage in the main frame. Just like we have on many mountain bikes from Specialized and Trek, we now have storage for food, snacks, and water in the main frame. And on the larger size frames, you can put up to one liter of water in the frame and have a tube coming out to handlebars. So no bidons, no water bottles, definitely not old fashioned here. State of the art, integrated hydration with a hose. So that is definitely a glimpse of the future. And if all that has whet your appetite for more Tour de France tech, then check out this video on the latest bikes right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. Enjoy Tour de France and stay tuned for more Tour de France tech over the next three weeks.